Welcome to the Lock Sportscast, your weekly source for Lock Sport news. This is episode 141, recorded March 26, 2023. I'm your host, Charles Current. And in today's episode, drain hole exploits, crushed by a safe, Jimmy Long's pick sold out again, preview of pick tac toe, how to conduct a physical penetration test, products, videos, blog posts, criminals, events, meetups, sales, giveaways, and more. You can subscribe to the audio version of the show on most podcast apps and at thelocksportscast.com. You can subscribe to video version on YouTube, Odyssey, Rumble, or Apple Podcasts. Links to stories discussed will be in the show notes. Some apps limit the length of show notes and the ability to post full links, but you can always find full show notes at thelocksportscast.com. And this is officially your last reminder to vote in the Locky Awards. Voting is open until the end of this month, so don't forget to get your votes in while they still count. Live stream will be held towards the end of next month because of my schedule. And we'll see who prevailed. First up in the news, Virginia man rescued from under 2,000 pounds safe. This is out of Glasgow, Virginia. The local fire department posted on Facebook that on March 9th, Company 2 was dispatched for a person who was reported to be trapped by a gun safe. Rescue 2 was the first fire unit to arrive and located a male who was pinned beneath a large gun safe that had fallen while unloading. The safe was estimated to weigh around 2,000 pounds and was severely unstable on arrival. Personnel from Rescue 2, Squad 2, and Ambulance 32 were able to stabilize and lift the safe using airbags. Once free, the patient was flown from the scene for his injuries. And this is your reminder. I know I've covered this before, but this is your reminder to be extremely careful when working with safes, especially if you are moving them, even if you're just moving them from one side of a room to another, be extremely careful. They are heavy, they can get away from you, and they can do significant damage to you or others in the area. So just remember that and be very careful. And unfortunately, another sad story here. A 78-year-old woman was killed in Chicago, Illinois. The article came out on March 23rd, and it says that a driver was allegedly speeding from a locksmith over an unpaid bill when he slammed into an SUV carrying Zainab, Zainab, uh, her husband, their son, his wife, and their three children at Kimball and Peterson Avenues on Tuesday night. She and her husband of 60 years had traveled to Chicago earlier this week from their home in Indiana. They were joined by their son, his wife, and their three children. As they crossed the intersection of Kimball and Peterson Avenues Tuesday night, they were hit by a driver speeding through a red light at more than 50 miles an hour, allegedly fleeing from a locksmith that he hadn't paid. She was taken to St. Francis Hospital in Evanston, where she later died. Her husband, age 81, suffered fractured ribs, a fracture to his right leg and spine, as well as bleeding in his brain. Others in the car were not as seriously injured. The driver who hit them, age 18, was taken in fair condition to Illinois Masonic Medical Center, where he was taken into custody and charged with reckless homicide and aggravated reckless driving. According to prosecutors, the suspect had been at a grocery store on Tuesday night where he locked his keys in his Saturn sedan. When the locksmith opened up the car, he said he would drive to an ATM to withdraw money, but instead sped off as the locksmith followed. The locksmith evidently followed him up until the point where he ran a stop sign. Only a few minutes later, he ran the red light and slammed into the Kia Sorento carrying the family. The suspect claims he had the right of way. Prosecutors said that video surveillance from nearby businesses shows otherwise. Also, electronic readings from his car revealed that he was traveling 65 miles an hour five seconds before the crash and 52 miles an hour one second before the crash. The posted speed limit was 30 miles per hour. So this young man has taken a life, probably seriously affected the rest of his life because he didn't want to pay the locksmith the fee to open up his car or couldn't pay the locksmith the fee to open up a car. It's, uh, it's sad. With the number of posts I see of 
either locksmith taking a pe- advantage of people that are locked out or people that are locked out trying to take advantage of the locksmith and not pay them. I can see why some locksmiths just stay away from the lockout business. It definitely appears to be the high risk part of the job, no matter how you go about it. So best wishes for the surviving family members. Uh, This lady evidently was very well loved, um, had a large family and a lot of community members that really liked her. And uh, she will be greatly missed, I'm sure. Moving on to community news, user Tony Sansan posted on Reddit, Jimmy is back, jimmylongs.com. After a long wait, looks like new stock arrived this morning. And then very shortly afterwards, added to the edit. This sold out quickly, though Jimmy said on Discord that more will be ready in a day or two. Jimmy Longs replied with the comment, Sorry guys, I really thought I had enough stock for a while. The good part is that I have a ridiculous number of picks ready for handles to be injected on. The bad news is that's the bottleneck. I'll have more stock in a day or two. And this post was made about five days ago as of this recording. And currently Jimmy Long's site is out of stock again. So congratulations to Jimmy Long on the great success of your picks. And uh, here's hoping that you can uh, get some more in stock and sell out of those too. Over on Twitter, Fox Picks posted the first official preview of Pic-Tac-Toe. The tweet said, first official preview of how Pic-Tac-Toe works. Watch my 12-year-old niece in purple against my sister in red and yellow. We hope you all come out to B-Sides Nashville on April 15th to see the premiere in person. Come by and compete and raise money for Hack for Kids. If you are interested in having Fox Picks at your conference, reach out to us via DM. I recommend you head over and check out the post. It has a video of the two playing Pic-Tac-Toe. Yes, this is the third time I have uh, mentioned this, three episodes in a row, and it's because I really like this idea. It's a very good-looking setup. It has bright lights. It has competition. It has... It has a draw. I think it will do a good job of drawing people in to get involved or just watch. And once you get their attention, then you can maybe direct them to the tables and teach them how to pick locks, show them how easy it is, get them more involved. So I just really like this. I think it's going to be a draw to to get people's attention to the lock picking tables. And Chris Capoon put out a video called ramble about retirement in that video he does just that he rambles about retirement evidently during one of the picking time lives he made a comment about potentially retiring from locksport and he made this video to address that because that got a lot of attention from people Uh, rightfully so chris has been a member of this community pumping out content like crazy on youtube this ramble about retirement video has his video 2473 if that gives you some idea over the course of something like five years he has put out an enormous amount of content he has an enormous collection of locks and he's not saying that he is definitely retiring or that he's retiring right now but he does go into the details about why he has considered it and um, reasons behind all that i recommend you check out chris's video link will be in the show notes And I can completely understand it. He has put so much time and effort into locks and lock picking over the last few years that there isn't much he hasn't already done or experimented with or made a video on. So the amount of new experience there is probably limited and that can make it less exciting. Here's hoping he doesn't retire soon, but if he does, I completely understand and, uh, Thank you for all the great content that you have put out there for us all, Chris. We really appreciate you. Moving on to some other videos here. The Event Lockpicking Championship 2023 was this weekend, and they put up some live stream videos of the competition, only showing a small fraction of the the people for privacy reasons. But if you are curious, you can go over and check it out at their YouTube channel, and the links will be in the show notes. 
And Rook Knight put out a video this week called Fixing Slash Repairing a Leashy Pick Tip. In the description, it says, Ever break a leashy tip or worried what you should do if it does break? Well, here's how to fix it in this video. And it's a step-by-step -step display of how you can replace the picking tip in your leashy pick. So if you have a leashy pick with a broken tip, or if you have leashy picks in general, they are fairly expensive. Uh, I recommend either watching that video or at least saving a link to it for when you might need it. And I recently covered a Reddit post by a user who claimed to have a potentially unpickable 3D printed combination lock. And Dr. Hogmaster has taken up that challenge and has put out a video called Unpickable 3D Printed Combination Lock by Beck Reddit Decoded and Gutted. And he walks through how you basically use the typical technique of dealing with these type of combination locks. It is a little more difficult, but it is able to be decoded in that manner. Anyway, check it out. He also disassembles the lock and shows you how it is made. Yeah, if you're curious. And the creator of the lock left a comment on that video. Haha, ha, this is the guy who made the lock. Love the video and glad you took the time to take a look. I've got a couple more designs in mind after watching this. I have a couple of ways to maybe mitigate this attack, although I don't see how I can completely prevent it without a total redesign. As you noticed, I'm not an expert, so I'm glad it lasted as long as it did against you. Good job on Dr. Hogmaster for doing that and a good attitude by the creator. Uh, learn from the mistakes and move on and try again. And Lockpicking Lawyer, doing what he does, has shown an exploit that evidently was shared with him by somebody else about how to defeat one of Schlage's more recent 100% uh, pick-proof smart locks. This is a lock that Schlage offers that has no physical keyway. It is only unlockable via uh, wireless technology, so therefore they say it is 100% pick-proof. However, they did make a mistake in its design that turns out to be not that uncommon, which is, if you know how, it can be bypassed through the drain hole. And this is a uh, kind of a theme with these type of locks. So I recommend you check out this video and see how it is he does it in this one. Might give you ideas if you have locks like this or maybe your landlord uses locks like this. You can uh, show this to him and also show them some ways to potentially protect against this attack. Moving on to interesting blogs and articles here. I'm not sure how they intend the name of this site to be pronounced or said. It is OXOO SEC and OXOO, for those who might not know, is hex, is zero in hex when you're programming in some languages like C. So is it zero sec? I'm, I'm not sure. Anyway, they have an article called How to Conduct a Physical Penetration Test and Tips. The article begins, Hello everyone. Please note that this is certainly not a complete outline, nor a how-to guide. This is just a basic overview of how to conduct a physical pen test. I hope that some of you find this helpful and enjoy. The different sections are scope and pre-engagement, information gathering, social engineering, physical intrusion, post-exploitation, reporting, and remediation. And if you are curious, of course, link in the show notes. Over at Tools Black Bag blog, they have a new post up called An Even Shorter Cylinder, and it begins this weekend at Vent Lockpicking Event. I spoke with a gentleman from BESA Specialty Lock Group in Belgium. They brought with them a very intriguing cylinder. It's a Kiso dimple cylinder, but what makes it special is its size. It appears to be a 1515 total size three centimeters and they go into a little more detail about that tiny lock and it's an interesting read so i recommend you check it out sparrows also has a new blog post up and it is entitled 400 dollars lock picked open with a zip tie so this is a new blog post about an older exploit 
but the timing is good because this is another example of a drain hole exploit on a Schlage electronic lock. If you are uh, curious on how this one works, if you haven't already seen this one, I recommend you go check it out. Like I said, it is an older one that has been around for a little while, but it is a new write-up on it, and I'm sure several of you haven't heard of it yet, so go check it out. And then The Onion has a new post-up called Locksmith Called After Man Loses Incantation Used to Open Ancient Stone Chamber. And I will sum up the article with this one quote. It took him 45 minutes to get here, which is fine, but now he wants to charge me $200 just to blast through the 4,000-year-old room-covered doors with shadow magic. Anyway, if you need something a little lighthearted after the uh, stories I shared earlier, this is uh, a good one. Moving on to the products section, Sparrows sent out an email about their new products. First up is the dimple picks are back. They say it took a long time to revisit the Black Flag dimple pick set, but it is back with new method for forming the tip. We are very pleased with this improved set. I know a lot of people were unhappy with their purchase on the previous one. Some people were really happy with it, but others were unhappy with it. So uh, let's hope their changes solved those issues. They also have SC19 and SC20 bump keys available. They say all selection keys are compatible with a lot of the various S keyways. It's like having a pair of skeleton bump keys. And then they have Flynn's lock. The description reads, this is a curious little arcade lock that is just difficult to crack. If you are up for a challenge, this is it. If you come up with some tool to make it easier to open, let us know. And the front loader that I announced last week over at, uh, I believe it was UK Bump Keys, it is designed to make your life easier when unloading and repinning those Euro locks. And that's it from Sparrows. And Uncensored Tactical put up a new video about their Quick Set Smart Key Field Tryout Set. This is a product I announced uh, previously on another episode. But they have a video up now demonstrating them, explaining why they are different than other sets out there. In part, the description says, while attempting to analyze a current product on the market as a guide to make a new field operations version, we discovered the foundational math was flawed and quality control lacking. We started from scratch, figured out the correct math, and designed an entire field use system around it. We provide the data sheet and key stamp reference so you can easily do advanced troubleshooting and use the information how you see fit. Under features, it says field portable fanny pack, Pouches for tried and untried keys. Glow-in-the-dark patches to designate pouches. Sewn-in key hook to quickly separate correct key once found. Improved key stamping with reference sheet of corresponding bidding. And extensive quality control. So, if you or your department might have any use for a kit like this, uh, be sure to check the video out. Moving on to events and meetups, we have a new, looks like regular meetup. This takes place in Dublin. This is lock picking at TOG. TOG is a hacker space. And it looks like they last met on March 23rd, and it says they meet every two weeks on Thursday. So if you're in the Dublin area, be sure to check out the link in the show notes and maybe stop in and say hi. Upcoming events that have lockpicking content are CypherCon on March 30th in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hack for Kids Milwaukee, also March 31st in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. B-Sides Tampa, April 1st, Tampa, Florida. Well, let's hope that's not an April Fool's joke. Colonel Con, April 12th in Omaha, Nebraska. Hack Space Con, April 13th, Kennedy Space Center, Florida. B-Sides Nashville. April 15th in Nashville, Tennessee, where you can check out Pic-Tac-Toe being used officially for the first time. B-Sides New York, taking place April 22nd in New York, New York. RSAC Sandbox, April 25th in San Francisco, California. T223 InfoSec Conference, May 4th, Helsinki, Finland. KakalakiCon, May 5th in Durham, North Carolina. B-Sides Knoxville, May 12th in Knoxville, Tennessee. Hack for Kids Chicago, June 3rd, Chicago, Illinois. 
and Circle City Con, June 23rd in Indianapolis, Indiana. Moving on to Lock Pickers United belts, we have two new purple belts to announce this week. We have GUID, also known as Unscrambled on Reddit. Congratulations on your new purple belt. And also, the Gaming Bug 1 earned a purple belt this week, so congratulations to you too. If you're not already familiar with the Lock Pickers United belt system, there are links in the show notes to the official rules and some videos and stuff explaining how the system works and why it's a fun game to play. So be sure to check those out. Now it's time to say thank you to people that made this particular episode possible. I'll start by saying a thank you to uh, Black Welder for the very generous uh, $100 PayPal donation. Very much appreciated. Uh, other financial supporters are Pandafrog, Michael Gilchrist, Starry Lock, Williams Brain, Dave to be deciphered, Lee Bonds Locks Port Journey, Pat from Uncensored Tactical, Three Raccoons in a Coat, Terrell, aka Anthony, Dr. Hogmaster, Clayton Howard, aka Cool Tune, Mog, John Lock, Rat Yoke, Mr. Picker, Cranky Lock Picker, Bear Bones Lock Picking, Snake, Paracentric, and John R. Chief Content Producer for this episode, Terrell, aka Anthony. Other content producers, Bare Bones Lockpicking, Dan R., Dragon Joey, I Fisk, Jeff Moss, Joshua Gonzalez, Kraken, Lady Locks, Oak City Locksport, Open Lock, The Lockpicker 1969, and Tony Verley. Thank you to all of you for your support. This show is only possible because of that support, so thank you so much for taking the time to send in news. I want to thank everybody who stepped up this week and uh, sent in news even if your story didn't get used this week don't lose hope uh, <laughs> sometimes i push things off for a week or two depending on how things lay out in my outline thank you to everyone who wrote in with your kind words about the show and your suggestions of how to lighten the load a lot of people suggested a different release time rather than weekly maybe doing bi-weekly or something like that that is something I have strongly resisted. My wife has been suggesting that for a long time. The reason I resist it is even with only a weekly schedule, sometimes I get news and it's old by the time I go to publish an episode. What I'm thinking about possibly doing is maybe on weeks where I either don't have a whole lot of news sent in or I'm busy because I'm working straight through the weekend or something like that, maybe try and do a special short news flash episode where I just get out the time sensitive information and then later when time allows and the news is there do a full episode just something I've been kind of playing with let me know what you think about that anyway this show is only possible because of the support of the community the number one most important thing you can do if you enjoy this show help me produce it by sending in information, news, links, giveaways, whatever you have that you think the community would like to know or would benefit from knowing, send it in to me at podcast at thelocksportscast.com or any of the other methods listed in the show notes. Just remember that everybody has their own little groups that they hang out in. Some people meet in person more. Some people spend a lot of time on YouTube. Some people spend a lot of time in the Discord. Different bits of information get shared in there that other parts of the community don't know. The whole idea of this podcast is get people to send that information into me, and then I can share it with the rest of the community. I really am interested specifically in things happening in the community with community members, either new techniques, new first picks, um, new tools developed by community members, things like that. I really would like to highlight what's going on inside our community. Second, news that relates to uh, lock sport, lock picking, lock smithing. Interesting videos and blog posts. Keep in mind that I can't cover every single video that people post. That would just be a long, boring show of me reading a list of new videos. So I'm uh, specifically looking for ones that have interesting content. To answer a couple of questions, I don't expect people to summarize everything they send in. You don't need to go to all that work. If it's a short article, you can just send me a link. Say, this might be interesting. If it's a longer article or a video, something that's going to take some time to digest, and the reason it's related to Locksport isn't clear from the title, then maybe put in a quick one sentence that says, 
hey, this is interesting because at such and such point, they mention this. Something like that. So I know what to look for when I'm going through the article, because otherwise I might just skim through it and I might miss why it's relevant and not share it. Anyway, other ways you can help the show if you don't want to send in news, uh, share the podcast with your lockpicking friends. The more people that are listening, out of the more groups that are listening, the more information that people can send in, which makes the show more interesting for everybody. Help the algorithms promote it by uh, leaving a comment, review, thumbs up, whatever the platform you listen on allows. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any episodes. Uh, If you want to help financially, you can. It is not required, but uh, you can. PayPal, Patreon, or Subscribestar are all ordered for. Just go to locksportscast.com slash support and uh, you can find the information there. If you support the show with a donation or information I use in the show, I will give you credit in the show and in the show notes. If you have feedback about the show, you have criticisms, you have specific things that you like or don't like, please let me know. Help me make the show better. You can go to locksportscast.com slash contact or just use the email podcast at locksportscast.com and let me know what you're thinking. And now let's get back to the rest of the show here. And this, uh, I didn't know what to, to call this. So I'm kind of actually starting to think about adding a new section to the podcast for uh, emergency calls, not criminals, but different interesting emergency calls. This particular bit of information was from the Northeast Ohio Scanner Twitter account. It says, Brooklyn, other, location withheld, female put on a set of handcuffs thinking they were plastic, but they were real and she had no key. No other details provided. I'll leave that to your imagination. Why was she putting on handcuffs in the first place? Why did she think they were plastic? And why was there no key to a metal set of handcuffs that she had access to? Let your imagination run wild on that one. So moving on to criminal news. This first story is entitled Two Arrested at Smith's for Stolen Vehicle. And this Smith's is a store in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. The story says that on March 11th, Rio Rancho Police Department officers discovered a stolen vehicle at the Smith store on New Mexico 528 around 3.45 p.m. The vehicle was occupied by two individuals, one of whom was the driver, a 44-year-old woman from Albuquerque. The other individual was a passenger, a 26-year-old man from Albuquerque. After reading the driver her rights, she admitted to receiving the vehicle from a friend to borrow as her own vehicle had been towed. However, she was unable to provide information about the friend or how she acquired the vehicle. Upon searching the vehicle, officers found a white Johnson & Johnson medical box containing several bags of crystal rock substance, which the driver admitted was methamphetamine. The passenger was found to be in possession of lockpicking tools. The driver was charged with receiving or transferring stolen motor vehicles and trafficking, while the passenger was charged with possession of burglary tools, possession of controlled substance, party to a crime, and trafficking. So no indication right off on that whether they were using the picks, but they were in possession of the picks inside of a stolen vehicle. And our next story comes out of the UK. Prolific thieves who stole 59 Ford Fiestas filmed stealing car in under two minutes. It says in November of 2022, two individuals were arrested by West Midlands Police Vehicle Crime Task Force after an extensive investigation. The thieves were captured on CCTV stealing cars in less than two minutes. They were using transmitter devices to break into vehicles. Not sure exactly what that means. The individuals pled guilty to conspiracy to commit theft of a motor vehicle, covering 59 thefts, as well as theft of bank card and fraud. They were sentenced to four years, one month, and three years, respectively. The thefts evidently took place in train station car parks. Extensive CCTV captured the thieves stealing cars. Recovered from both of their addresses were clothing that matched what the pair were wearing in the CCTV footage, phones which contained data and placed the thieves at the theft locations, and and the transmitter devices, blank Ford keys, and specialist auto locksmith tools. So you have to wonder, were these transmitter devices, blank keys, and and the specialist auto locksmith tools, ones that they were able to purchase online or on the black market 
Were they ones stolen from locksmiths like we see so often? How did these end up in the thieves' hands is, is the question I come away with this article from. Just because of all the stories I cover about these things being stolen from locksmiths, I have to wonder uh, what the black market is like. Moving on to sales real quick, we have the Artisan Ideas coupon code, JASON, where you can get uh, a percentage off. I've seen different figures from different people about what that uh, percentage is, so I'm just not even going to quote it anymore. Again, the code is JASON. This is the site that has the Antique Locks and Keys, Their History, Uses, and Mechanisms book that uh, Jason from SE Lock and Key was promoting. He seems to really like the book, so if you're interested, you can head over to our artisan ideas and uh, save on that using his code if you're shopping at multi-pick there are four different 10 percent off codes listed in the list on my website uh, be sure to head over and check those out if you are planning on shopping at multi-pick lock pickers mall not lock big mall but lock pickers mall has a 15 percent off coupon code and it's right on their front page but if you don't want to go there 15 pc off is the code and that's lock pickers mall no codes on this one but uh vent or cfix has a specials page that you can go to link in the the show notes there they have a full page there of items that are on sale bare bones lock picking through march 31st you can still use the code do not duplicate 10 for 10 percent off over there and for April, you can use the code the gaming bug 10 for 10% off. And over at 3dlocksport.com, you can save 10% with the code LSCAST10. Uh, lots of really cool 3D printed Locksport accessories over there. So be sure to check that out. Tony Varelli and 3dlocksport.com, the LSCAST10 coupon code is one of the longest running codes on this show. Uh, thank you to him for his long time support and don't take that as i get something out of these coupon codes none of these give me any kickbacks i don't make any money off of these these are just so you can save some money and uh, thank you to tony varelli for making sure this audience has always saved some money over at southward they have two pages that you might want to check out they have their sale items page which has some new items on it they rotate those out every once in a while and uh, they just did a rotation on some of them so be sure to check that out if you haven't been there recently. They also have their cosmetically blemished page, which a couple of things have sold out on. If you're thinking about anything over there, you might want to jump on it before they disappear. If you're shopping at Law Lock Tools, be sure to check out Review Guru's Twitter post. There's a link there that will generate you a code that is good for 10% off. And uh, Mako Locks always seems to have a discount code by Mako that will save you 15% at checkout. And UK Lock Pickers always seems to have a code. Gift will save you 10% over there. It doesn't ever seem to expire. Moving on to giveaways. Lock Kraken 200 subscriber giveaway is running until somewhere around the middle of April. So be sure to check that one out. And check out Picking Time live streams. Uh, they take place on Sunday, usually about the time I'm recording this episode. So be sure to head over and check those out. They quite often have giveaways on those. And CLK Supplies has a weekly Lock Boss giveaway. They give away prizes every week. And I believe in May, they are taking all of those entries and also using them for a big giveaway on a fancy key cutting machine. So be sure to check that out. And that brings us to the end of another episode. Thank you so much for all of the support that came in this week. All the great notes. It really is appreciated and it really uh, raised my spirits a lot. Thinking that people still really enjoy this show. I was beginning to wonder the way the numbers were going. But uh, thank you so much. And uh, don't don't stop now. Keep sending in those, those news links. Keep sending in the, the video links and other things. I really appreciate it. Remember, keep it legal. Legal.